my name is Picture Plane. I'm an artist and musician uh, living here in New York City. So you grew up in New Mexico, right? Yeah, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. That must have been interesting. It is interesting because uh, it's just a really unique and different kind of place. They call Santa Fe the city different there. And, you know, growing up there, I think we even really recognized that it was kind of not a, a normal place to live. It's like really culturally different there. It's extremely beautiful um, and like clean and just kind of really gorgeous. Like beautiful mountains everywhere. It's like desert. Um, different kind of vibe there. The food is different. The people are different. Everything is is really cool down there. So is, I have a lot of a lot of love for New Mexico. It's a weird state. Yeah, but is the is UFO culture really big there? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. Maybe not so much like in Santa Fe, but it's definitely part of the lore. And of course, there's Roswell, which is super famous when people think about UFOs or aliens or whatever. Like Roswell, like is right there when it comes to mind. Maybe that was just always kind of in the back of my head growing up there. And there is a lot of weird paranormal activity like in northern New Mexico and southern Colorado. There's like a, a real hot spot around there actually for UFO sightings and stuff. So you, were, you, were you always kind of interested in that stuff? I think so. As long as I can remember. I mean, I was a huge X-Files fan. Like when I was in elementary school, you know, I was reading weird books about anything I could get my hands on. I was really into like science fiction and um, so yeah, I think I was always really into to aliens and stuff. I think I saw a UFO even when I was like nine years old with my friend in okay. my backyard. We swore that we saw it. I, I have no idea. I mean, it was I was like nine years old or something, but we were on my trampoline in my backyard. Like, what is that thing? <laughs> We'll still talk about it today. Whenever I see that dude, I'm like, dude, remember that? He's like, yeah. So what does the word degenerate mean to you? The, the word degenerate means to me like someone that is kind of rejected from society or on the outside of society a little bit. Um, you know, and obviously there is like the, the textbook definition of someone that's kind of like lower or or you know like outcasted because they're either not smart or they're like you know somehow like a lowbrow individual kind of um but to me like it doesn't have to mean that i think it just means someone that maybe is that thinks a little bit differently so what um inspired you to name your most recent uh, project generally at the time i had been getting like a lot of uh well, it's sort of like a long story, really. Um, there was a terrible fire in Oakland at the ghost ship DIY space. Um, a lot of people died. Uh, some people that I know were there, and I knew some people that passed away. And um, then, like, right after that, a few days, literally after, the DIY venue that I used to live at in Denver, Rhinoceropolis, was like forcefully shut down by the police and fire department. All my friends that were there were all kicked out, literally just into the street, like nowhere to go, homeless style. And uh, all these people were like super happy about it on the internet, like mostly like right wing 4chan style trolls that were they, were they were claiming that they had been calling all the fire departments and trying to get these places shut down and like laughing about it basically. And I was like, you motherfuckers, like they were, you know, posting all these memes of, you know, like Pepe the Frog in like a fireman's outfit, like shutting down DIY spaces, which in their mind were like these like hives of like anarchist leftist scum, you know, that needs to be like squashed or whatever. And they were calling all the people that died in the ghost ship like degenerates and stuff. and. Um, my friends and Rhino, you know, we were degenerates. And I was like, wow, that term, you know, if that's what you think that we are or what we represent, then like, that sounds really cool to me, you know, because these are my friends and my people. Um, 
so I'll happily be that degenerate to you. And then it was right around the time I was making my record and I don't know, I wrote a song about it and I was like, that's kind of the perfect album title for what I'm trying to say here. So yeah, that was that. What was it like living at Rhinoceropolis? Rhinoceropolis. Rhinoceropolis. It's like a paradise, you know? I was so happy to live there for so long. I lived there for six years. Um, I may, maybe I should describe what that is for people that don't know. Yeah. I mean, um, Rhinoceropolis was and is a DIY venue, warehouse, like art gallery show space in Denver um, that I lived at for six years. I sort of helped start it with a group of artist friends and musicians. Um, we all lived in there in like hand built rooms, you know, that were like nine by nine foot squares of just like wood hammered and nailed together. Um, and it was just a space of like total creative freedom and like self-expression really, where we could be as loud as we wanted and be as crazy as we wanted in there. We booked thousands of shows over the years, you know, touring bands coming through. Um, it was really the spot to be at if you were into weird stuff. I mean, all kinds of different music, you know, harsh noise and like crazy punk and hardcore, you know, just weird stuff. We were throwing art shows there all the time. And it just really allowed all of us there to kind of find ourselves, I think, amidst that that freedom, really. It's where I started playing tons of shows and like really being able to, to practice and like find my voice as an artist. You know, I produced all my records in there, well, a, a few of them, and I don't know, it was just like a beautiful mess, really. You know, those spaces are so important, I think, for young people to have a place to go where there's like no rules and no judgment and it's not a bar or a venue, it's like, it's just a space to be yourself at, you know. Um, yeah, it was really cool and important. Definitely changed my life, for sure, for the better. What made you want to put the footage um in the, the color spectrum video of that space. My friend who shot that footage had been sitting on it for, for years and it had just like really never been seen before. And a very close friend of mine, Colin Ward, uh, passed away and I wrote the, that song about him. Like the song was being made when he passed away. And, like Smart Death had already given his verse and everything. And then it was the last song to finish on my record, and I wanted to kind of make it a, like a tribute to Colin. And he's in all of that footage, like everywhere. He was a huge part of, of what was going on at Rhinoceropolis, really inspiring artist and musician, just like full of energy. And I thought that it went really well with the sound of the song and also what Smart Death and I had shot in Canada, which is just like on some shitty kind of VHS type camera. And um, yeah, so I just kind of spliced it all together and edited it and it, I wanted it to be a tribute to both R Rhinoceropolis and Colin and just sort of like a weird window into our, our world there of what living there was like, you know, it was like, like a dream yeah. in there, like, time was really kind of ir irrelevant there and we were just living in our own weird fantasy world there so i'm very curious on how it feels like to have coined the term for an entire subgenre of music which is witch house you're talking about witch house yeah i think um you know i get a lot of credit for that when i feel like i really shouldn't like you know it was totally beyond my control, like how that spread and how all these different bands that started being called witch house bands. I had nothing to do with that really. Um, and definitely like it was just my friend and I, this artist Shams, he really kind of, we 
were there together kind of like coming up with this just like really joking around about this um as a means to call like talk about house music being like a cult based house music like witch house is like a, a pun really um and I did an interview with Pitchfork where I was like, this is going to be the year of Witch House. Um, and I listed some bands being like Witch House bands, being myself and my friend Shams and my friends in Denver, this band Modern Witch. And, you know, it was really just an inside joke between Shams and I. But that went kind of like viral in a way. And like people started attributing it or like I really don't even know what happened but uh, yeah it really had nothing to do with bands like Salem and stuff which the tag kind of like stuck on um, so yeah it was more of a playful thing for sure but uh, I don't know it just stuck yeah yeah you don't really meet someone every day who's coining terms that's it's weird about that because before that I had I had always wanted to kind of coin some sort of term before Witch House even I, I had been joking about almost as like a conceptual art piece to like create an entire new movement or something I was always thinking about that of like I had this term called creep in Denver and I was like this is the creep movement like you know, this is the year of the creep, like, but I don't even know what that means, you know, but uh, I was just always, I love language and like terms, trying to come up with something like that. Um, so that was that same kind of energy of Witch House, even though it got completely taken out of its original meaning and context, at least for us when, when we came up with that. But um, what can you do? <laughs> So Alien Body, the website, or is it, I think so. Your personal website has the the phrase "destroy all systems of authority." I was wondering if you could elaborate oh, on that. I think that was m maybe on an Alien Body shirt too. Um, that sh specific shirt was kind of referencing police brutality. It says "cop terror" on the front with like a big skull. Um, uh, I've always been sort of attracted to certain a anarchistic ideals. Um, I'm a huge advocate of like personal freedoms and responsibility and just like, um, yeah, I don't have much respect for authority figures or, you know, control over human beings, um, is something I really kind of despise. And, um, yeah, I reference that sometimes in, in my my visual art. I think um, I'm really interested in like freedom and like con consciousness being allowed to move forward. You know, there's so many restrictions in the world, or like people trying to impose certain belief systems or um, you know rules and regulations on society and individuals um, and uh, not that you know certain rules and things are, are good of course but um, I'm talking about more like philosophically like you know control over others um, whether it's like re religious or you know government anything like that um, I try to kind of break free from those those systems or at least reference that in my my work. Something that's really interesting to me is that I've seen you on Twitter talking about, you know, maybe your political beliefs, and then there's fans that are like, we don't want to hear about this, we just want to hear the music. And um, do you think an artist has the responsibility to share their political beliefs? Or like, Well, we live in such crazy times now. Things are so divided, and, you know, I think that any art is going to naturally be political. It's hard to, you know, if your art is completely devoid of any meaning, I mean, like, what, what are you doing? What are you saying, you know? I mean, it doesn't have to be super political, especially, like, 
in American politics, like you don't have to come out and say like I support this person or like I support this person, like you know that's not what I'm saying at all. Like, um, but people get so attached to their beliefs or whatever that when someone challenges those beliefs, you know, people will take it personally or some sometimes. And um, I think it's Im I've always been a pretty outspoken person. I think it's important to. Uh, to speak up if you're seeing something that is not right or if you're seeing something that is just blatantly fucked you know um i think to be totally apathetic or just like not care or not understand what's happening in the world is you're just like uh it's just kind of whack i think i mean to just not care about anything you know um I guess that's all I have to say about that, really. Like, I try to not be, like, I've never really made any super, like, political songs or, you know, I, I'm not, like, singing about, like, oh, fuck the government or whatever. I don't like kind of heavy-handed um, art like that that's, like, telling you. It might, it might it's more, ab like, abstract to me, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I'll definitely speak my mind sometimes where do you think music is headed next wow that's that's a good question because everyone's saying soundcloud is dying and we've completely transitioned to digital music nearly so i'm just curious what you think because you've you've been making music since 2001 i think something like that i mean yeah when i was really young in high school so i'm sure you've seen a lot of changes in the music industry and everything I'm pretty excited about like, uh, you know, the DIY explosion of like m making electronic music is like easier than ever now. You know, everyone can do it in their bedroom by themselves with just a computer. Um, where it's going, like, I'm not sure. I'd love to just see more collaborations and more, more bands and stuff, you know, like, um, there's something really beautiful about people coming together and just like playing live music, you know. Um, if that can continue, then I'm happy, you know. Like, uh, I'm not sure what the next trend will be necessarily. Like, I'm not too concerned with that. Um, I just like raw, primal, like, freedom and expression, you know. That will always be the best music, whatever kind of genre that is, or whatever. Um, just like young kids, like really letting it go, like letting it all out there. Um, not giving any fucks, you know, just like straight punk attitude. Whatever form or sound that takes, you know, that will, that will always be the next thing, you know. There will always be like punk kids and punk attitude out there, you know. I'm not sure what the next wave of of teenage freaks are gonna get themselves into, but um, hopefully it's just raw and crazy. You know, that's the best I think.